How's it going, Giants fans? Welcome back to Fireside Giants with your boys, Alex and Anthony. Today, we are discussing the Giants injury report, which may as well be a laundry list of things you need to do today. It is really long. It's really bad. We're going to be watching live action horror tomorrow on the offensive line. We remember with a healthy offensive line, including Ben Bredesen and Evan Neal against Dallas in week three, and Evan Neal gave up three sacks, and the offensive line in general was completely tossed around. And this just gets a lot worse, right? Our left guard position is turning into a Russian roulette of who do we want to suck more? You know, like, is it is it Shane Lemieux? Is it Josh Azudu? Is it now it's going to be Jack Anderson, who most of you guys probably have never heard of, is slated to start tomorrow at left guard. And he's the guy that um, last week, Brian Dable, two weeks ago, Brian Dable chewed out on the sideline um, when he made up that, made a bad, I guess, maybe a false start or something like that. So this is not good, guys. The offensive line is slaughtered. We're going to take a look at that. Take a look at some other injuries that are kind of coming down. Take a look at Evan Neal um, and Aziz Ojolari and, and, you know, when their projected timetables are for a turn. But right now, I am not really looking forward to this game tomorrow. We kind of went into this knowing it was going to be a bloodbath and that all the injuries now. Do I think we can win this game? I, I don't even want to say yes because I, I think that we're just totally outmatched. But I'll let Anthony do the positive stuff today. But uh, nonetheless, Anthony, how are you feeling today? Uh, a day before Thanksgiving in the turkey. I'm feeling great. Thanksgiving Eve. I can't wait for my turkey tomorrow. Can't wait for all the food. And I can't wait to go into a food coma after the Giants lose to Dallas. But I'm going to keep the role reversal going, Alex. I'm Mr. Positive from now on. I believe in our New York Giants. Can we win tomorrow? Yes. Is it likely? Hell to the no. But I believe in Brian Dable and I believe in Wink Martindale. And I'm just hoping and praying that they have another one of those games where they string together a perfect game plan and go out there and shock the world as they've done a couple of times so far this season. Now, this injury report is absolutely disgusting, terrifying. This literally screams we are not going to win tomorrow. But I'm going to keep the hope because we still have a few key players who are playing. It's not like Dexter Lawrence is on that list. Leonard Williams isn't on that list. Uh, Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley, they're all out there. They're going to be healthy. So this team still has a fighting chance, and I'm going to keep being positive and hoping for that because I'm in a happy mood. Thanksgiving's tomorrow. I can't wait to eat some food and hopefully – feast on a turkey leg while Saquon Barkley feasts on a Dallas star. I want to see Saquon Barkley run for 200 yards and have a historic Thanksgiving performance while I chow down on some cornbread and mashed potatoes. That's what's going to happen, bro. And I don't care about all the injuries. Am I terrified of them? Yes. Do they likely damn our team from having any chance of winning? Sure. But I'm going to stay positive, Alex. You can be Mr. Negative Nancy and get all upset here, but I'm going to keep the hope alive for the Fireside Giants community. New York Giants on the backs of Saquon Barkley and Daniel Jones tomorrow. It's going to be a great game. So, so how did the Giants win this game? Um, sticking on the positive note, what are the, what are the catalysts that need to happen for the Giants to win this game? I think there's three primary ones. One you just hinted at pretty heavily. Saquon Barkley's got to have a freaking day. He's got to destroy, absolutely annihilate Dallas. Like there's no other way around it. He's got to have a day. The second thing is the Giants have to win the turnover battle, right? They cannot turn the ball over uh, multiple times. They're going to get beat. They're going to give up points off of the turnovers, um, and they, they got to win that battle right there. The third thing is they got to stop the run, right? They have to stop the run. Jamal Williams had three touchdowns last week, right? You got Tony Pollard and Zeke. Tony Pollard is on fire right now he is unstoppable whether it's at the receiving game or the running game the guy is just out of this world stopping him is an essential part of the Giants game plan Dexter Lawrence Leonard Williams Jihad Ward Kayvon Thibodeau those linebackers they got to step up and make plays they got to step up and close those lanes the we know Dallas's running game is elite they have a, always have a good offensive line somehow doesn't matter how many guys they turn over doesn't matter how many guys that they get new they always manage to put together a decent offensive line, and it pisses me off the Giants cannot replicate this. But you know, speaking of the Giants' offensive line, uh, we got Andrew Thomas, thankfully, but he's sick. So we have a we have an ill Andrew Thomas, which is unfortunate, but he'll be playing. We have left guard Jack Anderson, who I didn't think we'd ever see. We had so many players in front of him, I didn't think we'd ever possibly get to this point. We had three freaking players, Shane Lemieux, Josh Azudu, Ben Bredesen, even Nick Gates. And right now we're like, oh my God, center Nick Gates probably starts if I had to guess because John uh, Feliciano, I don't think is traveling with the team, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, you know, that's obviously a problem. Right guard, Mark Lewinsky and right tackles Tyree Phillips, who is going to get destroyed, right? 
Micah Parsons, Demarcus Lawrence, whoever you want to choose. Ty- if Evan Neal can't handle them, Tyree Phillips is not going to do well. And I am very scared to watch that um, right side of the offensive line. So, you know, how do you beat that? I guess a lot of play action. You got to roll out. You got you to buy time, manufacture production. This would have been a great game for Wandale Robinson uh, to be involved in, you know, short route concepts, getting in the ball in space. Torn ACL, of course, and, you know, I'm still devastated over that. But, you know, looking at this offensive line, Anthony, I mean, it's just ridiculous at this point. Like, how many guys can we get injured? How many guys can we turn over? Um, you know, what are your thoughts on Jack Anderson and Tyree Phillips right now? Definitely not an ideal situation. No, definitely not an ideal situation. A situation I prayed and hoped we would never have to realize because seeing the fact that, you know, Tyree Phillips has started a few games and then he got injured this week. He was a bit hobbled this week and now he's going to have to go out there and play anyway. And at that left guard spot, you're seeing Jack Anderson step in here and play. I, I don't even know why it's gotten this bad. How has this happened? How is this even possible for the Giants to be down to? What is this now? This would be the fourth string left guard, I believe. That's unreal. I mean, how does the first string and the second string both go down with injuries in the same week? I don't understand it. It's really, really unfortunate. The Giants just can't seem to catch a break. Shane Lemieux out of the lineup all year long with a toe injury, comes back in, plays one half, and he's right back out with a toe injury. I just don't understand why this man's toe cannot get it together. Like, please, Mr. Lemieux's toe, can you start to work with Shane to make things better? This is ridiculous now. I've never seen a toe cause someone so much grief. But Joshua Zidu also out of the lineup. I think Zidu's actually played pretty well when he's been on the field. I don't think he's been perfect. He's been a rookie. He's had his growing pains. But I thought that he's been decent. And it's a, it's a real shame that he, at the very least, cannot enter the lineup with Shane Lemieux out. And then Andrew Thomas, the best offensive lineman in the NFL right now. He's not going to be at 100%. Yes, he's healthy enough to play. He doesn't have any physical body injuries, but he's sick. And it, it sucks to play sick. And he's going to have to fight through that. He's probably going to be sitting on the sideline, getting an IV every time the defense is on the field. And he's probably not going to be as well nourished as the rest of these guys who had their Thanksgiving breakfasts. So I think that when you're looking at this offensive line, there's holes all over the place. There is not a lot of hope to put into this unit. The running game is going to suffer because of this. Daniel Jones is going to suffer because of this but at the very least thank the lord that andrew thomas isn't injured he's just ill he'll still be out there and he's enough to really hold an, an entire offensive line together he is that good even when he's sick i believe that andrew thomas is still going to go out there and put together another great performance as he has in every single game so far this season but again talking about this offensive line it is the major concern for us last time we played dallas our offensive line got torn to shreds demarcus lawrence had a game the dallas cowboys defensive line just could not stop pressuring daniel jones the offensive line just couldn't stop them but hopefully the giants went back reviewed that film saw what they were doing wrong saw how the dallas cowboys were beating them on every single play in a pass rushing standpoint and maybe they can go out there be well coached and make uh make an adjustment and go ahead and kind of mitigate that pass rushing so i believe in brian dable that's really always going to be my thing i know Last week's game against uh, Detroit, that wasn't his best performance, Brian Dable. That, that was a poorly coached game. The Giants got out coached. They played down to their competition, and they got out coached. But this week, I'm trusting in Brian Dable because we've seen him do it before. We've seen him make this team play up to the competition and out coach an, a, a real superior team. And so I'm not going to doubt the fact that Brian Dable can go out there and do that again, despite the injuries, despite the decimation on the offensive line. And the fact that the last time we played Dallas, they destroyed us in a pass rushing standpoint. I believe in Brian Dable to go back, watch that film, make some changes and figure out a game plan to go out there and hopefully sneak away from Dallas with a win on Thanksgiving. So again, I'm trying to be more positive here, but I, I really don't think that all hope is lost. Are we the favorites in this game? Absolutely not. We're major underdogs, but isn't that what we love to be the New York Giants are always better as underdogs historically look back at 2007 and 8 look back at 2011 and 12 we are always the underdogs and that's when we play our best football even this season when we've gone into the games as underdogs that's when we went on that winning streak so gonna keep the positivity gonna keep the hope alive here go into this game as the underdogs I know the offensive line is gonna be an issue but I think the solution to the offensive line problem is good coaching from Brian Dable Mike Kafka and the rest of the guys on that staff yeah, I mean, that's that's the point to make, right? Like the coaching staff is that good, in my opinion, and I think a lot of people agree that we can find ways to compete. Um, but at a certain point, it's like, 
how many how many players like when you have a basically a team packed full of practice squad players not even the best coaching can make this team competent you know what i mean like not even the best coaching can turn these guys into serviceable players mainly not because they're not capable but because they just don't have the experience right they don't know the playbook fully a lot of them they don't know uh what is expected of them they, they don't know how to, like think about all the penalties that we had last week against detroit right those penalties were because half of our, our team was practice squad players and they don't know the silent count they don't know the they don't know the plays they're running in the wrong direction you know what i mean like it you sometimes you just can't it, it's hard to coach up guys who just need more time um and, and losing the amount of players that we've lost at this point it's like it's an unsustainable practice we have no money either it's not like we can go out and sign guys to like can fit right into the system and have experience um because we don't have those why do you think we're plucking receivers off of buffalo's practice squad right there's a reason that we're going off of buffalo's practice squad and bringing up guys like isaiah hodgins because we need guys who know brian dable know the offense and know what is expected of them right that's just the expedited process of you know bringing in those type of players so it sucks to be you know the giants right now but the list the laundry list of players that are out is just absolutely unfathomable right so the, the, the offensive linemen that are out individually um you know our john feliciano i think shane lemieux is out as well josh azudu is out uh evan neal is out he's confirmed to be out but he's trending in the right direction he should be back next week i believe in week 13 and then the other players that are out Oziz Ojolari, of course, Wandale, Sterling Shepard, Xavier McKinney, Ben Bredesen, um, Aaron Robinson, Fabian Moreau, Adoree Jackson, Daniel Bellinger, hopefully next week. Um, and then it's, it's so many more that I'm not even that I'm not even saying. Uh, it's just it's brutal. I mean, think about the starters. Evan Neal's a starter, Ojolari's a starter, Wandale's a starter, Sterling Shepard's a starter, McKinney starter, Bredesen starter, Aaron Robinson starter, even Moreau was starting, Adoree Jackson starter, Daniel Bellinger. I mean, that's 10 freaking starters that we don't even have right now. And think about what that does to a team, you know, the next man up. Sure. I, and, and for the record, I totally am fine with like, the next man up mentality, but how many times do you have the next man up at one position, right? Right tackle, like three times left guard, next man up, next man. Up. It's a certain point. There's not enough men to call up. You know what I mean? It's just, it's kind of a crappy situation, whether it's the turf, whether it's the, the training staff, whether it's just bad luck. Um, I have no idea what is going on with this giant team, but it feels like this happens every single year and it really gets on my nerves, but nonetheless, let's hold out hope. Let's hold out hope that the giants could find a way to keep this game close. Cause ultimately if the Giants can go into the fourth quarter and they're one, maybe they're, they have a slight lead or they're tied or they're down one possession. Anything can happen, right? We've seen crazier things happen every single year in football, right? Every single season we've seen crazier things happen than the giants beating the Cowboys, even though they're shorthanded. Uh, pretty significantly, but you know, think about all the crazy. Sh I mean, think about the Jets last week scoring three points and losing on a punt return. Like it, football is football; anything, ha anything can happen. So yes, they could absolutely win this game, and we're going to be sitting there like, "How the hell did they pull that off? This is a miracle!" But let's freaking go. Or we're like, "All right, it was what we expected, and we move forward." And and you know, it is what it is, and you know, it's just enjoy your Thanksgiving anyway. <laughs> so it, you know, we'll see what happens tomorrow uh, afternoon, my friends. But guys, hope you guys enjoy. Uh, Thanksgiving with your family and friends, you know, spend some good time with them. If you're traveling home, you know, be safe out there, you know, Thursday, uh, Thanksgiving, th I think Wednesday actually is one of the biggest days for drunk driving accidents for, you know, people that are just making bad decisions. So, you know, if you have a choice not to drive, I would suggest don't do that. Don't put yourself in harm's way. And if you're drinking, make sure you're not drinking too much. If you're going to be driving at all, not drinking at all, don't risk it. Not worth it for your family and yourself. So definitely want to give that, um, some attention, but uh, at the very least, enjoy some quality time with family, friends, enjoy some food. Anthony, what do you got to say? I just want to say I'm thankful for the Fireside Giants community. Everyone that tunes in on a daily basis brightens my days with the awesome comments that you guys leave. I read through all of them, might not respond to them all, but I read them. And just the amount of love and support that we get from you guys keeps us going every single day, covering the team that we love. It's really just a community here on Fireside Giants. We love talking about the Giants. You guys love talking about the Giants in the comment section and love hearing us talk about the Giants. At the end of the day, we all have one shared passion, which is the New York Giants in the NFL. And I just want to say at all the things that i'm very thankful for i'd love to talk about what i'm thankful for around thanksgiving this year i'm very thankful for the fireside giants community and all of the viewers of this channel who support us day in and day out 
Absolutely. I, I uh, definitely uh, mimic that same sentiment. It's been a long journey for us. You guys have been here for a long time. If you remember the days when the Giants were really bad, now we have some hope, some optimism. We won some games this year, really exciting. So it's been really great to share all of those positive moments with all of you guys. So thank you so much for helping us build this community and continuing to build something really special. So we love you guys for that. Enjoy this Thursday upcoming, some great food, great family. Um, and we're sending you guys all the good energy in the world. Make sure to like and subscribe as always. And we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Giants episode.